Where do kernels come from? Well, they come largely from published scientific journal articles. Uh, journals like the, America, uh, the Journal of the American Medical Association, the journal Science, the journals like Behavior Modification, the Journal of Applied Behavior Analysis, Developmental Psychology, prestigious journals. And who does that? Well, there are thousands and thousands of scientists all across the world and graduate students who are studying ways to influence behavior. And sometimes they come up with a really simple, practical, good idea or method that you or I or anyone else could go, wow, I could do that. And when those get published, that's what we're looking for. What's required for a kernel to be a kernel? Well, it has to be published in a good scientific journal that's been peer-reviewed. That means lots of other people reading this and go, no, 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 you've got to change that. Why, why did that happen? And couldn't it have been a result of this or that? And people going through that dialogue. And it must have a high quality experimental uh, design. That, mean it, it, that means it has to be tested. That's the kind of hard acts of deciding whether or not this thing really works. One of the questions people often ask me is, how much and how quickly will kernels change or influence the behaviors that I'm interested in, either decreasing something or increasing something? Right. Well, in terms of percentage, it's not uncommon uh, for kernels to, say, increase the behavior or decrease the behavior, whatever you're working on, by 50% or more. Uh, for something that is ridiculously simple to do. In some cases, it's even more powerful. For some things, maybe not quite so powerful, but the benefits from that simple thing, and then maybe you can add on a couple of others, uh, outweigh almost anything else that you could do.